Welcome, I'm Alex, and let's dig into some of the cool stuff you can do with all 14 of the weapon types available in Monster Hunter Rise. For each weapon type, I'm going to highlight either an advanced technique for it, a useful combo, a silkbind synergy, or something you might already know, but may or may not be using it to its full potential. I'm hoping this helps improve your general combat skills, or even better, make the core gameplay of Monster Hunter Rise even more fun. For the Gun Lance, it has a really good aerial combo that can quickly get into that powerful Wyvern State cannon attack. After performing a wire dash or any time you're in the air, you can do an alternate aerial attack by pressing ZR to fire off a blast, followed by X before hitting the ground. If your Gun Lance ammo is depleted, pressing ZR will skip right into that second plummeting attack. Also, you can follow up the mid-air blast with multi-presses of A to comically launch yourself higher into the air. Useful, somewhat, fun, very. This entire aerial sequence is most useful though when followed by a X plus A attack after you hit the ground, which allows you to quickly close the distance and get right to that Wyvern Stake cannon attack. This lodges an explosive stake into the monster if it connects, and this is a really reliable way to do it without having to do any charged shelling or a grounded combo sequence. For the hammer, it has a cool shortcut to what normally would be two fully charged up attacks. While in the hammer's blue colored charge mode, you can press ZR plus A to activate a charge switch, putting you into the yellow colored hammer mode, which also puts you at a fully charged up third stage attack. Out of this charge, you can do two different follow ups depending on if you're moving or if you're stationary. However, this entire sequence can be done without charging the hammer initially by pressing and holding ZR for a fraction of a second and then inputting A. This allows you to almost instantly get to those two strong third tier finisher attacks, making it worthwhile to regularly jump between both your hammer's charge modes. Another fun thing you can do with the hammer is stalling your spinning bludgeon silkbind attack, which is default set to ZL plus X. If you press and hold ZR just for the briefest of moments and then press and hold ZL plus X, you can prime this attack and wait for the best moment to unleash it. If you mistime this or find that your target has already moved on, you can easily just cancel out of this with a tap of B. For the dual blades, it has a really easy way to perform its heavenly blade dance aerial attack at the cost of just one wire bug charge. After performing a vertical wire dash by pressing ZL plus X or ZL plus ZR while aiming upwards, you can then input ZR in the air to activate demon mode, which has two follow ups you can do out of it before you hit the ground. If you input X after pressing ZR, you'll do a decent downward spinning attack, however, if you input A after pressing ZR, that is how you easily get to the Heavenly Blade Dance. This attack, if connected with a monster, will send you spinning satisfyingly along the top of them dealing damage along the way. You can also do this after stalling in the air during a wire dash, which will allow you to bait enemies into a surprise Heavenly Blade Dance. Fun for you, not so much for them. For the Hunting Horn, the attacks out of a Wire Dash are some of the best rushdown abilities the Horn has. First, you need to know that the aerial attack for the Hunting Horn is a two-part process. One tap of X will prime the Horn in the air, and the next will quickly send you plummeting down. You can perform any of your basic notes out of this by pressing X, A, or X plus A. You can also use that stalled moment in the air before the second input to reorient your attacks to land in any direction 360 degrees around yourself. Where this becomes really more useful is when performing a horizontal wire dash by pressing ZL plus ZR or ZL plus A. If you double tap the attack buttons quick enough, you can launch forward with a great distance closing fast attack. You can even add a tap of B while in midair to extend the length of this wire dash before launching into that attack. Another useful mechanic for the hunting horn is activating all of your basic buffs as fast as possible. To get to your magnificent trio attack the quickest way that I found, perform your forward plus X attack, followed by the A attack, then the X plus A attack, and finally ZR plus X. For that last input, it's best to be holding down ZR and be mashing X as the third attack animation is playing out to ensure you get the correct fourth input. The magnificent trio activates all of your basic buffs, and that's a pretty fast way to get to it. For the Insect Glaive, if it wasn't a crazy enough aerial weapon already, there's a new way for it to cover an impressive amount of ground fairly quickly. With your weapon drawn, after using the Glaive's ZR plus B Vault ability, pressing B will propel you again further, and after that you can initiate a Silkbind Vault, default set to pressing ZL plus X, launching you yet again. That can be followed up by another input of B, followed by an input of A to get a little more distance there at the end. 
If you have multiple wirebug charges, before initiating that last input of A, you can instead activate yet another silkbind fault, and you can do this numerous times until you run out of charges. This can be used to quickly close the distance during a fight, navigate to tricky areas, or to just get around the maps a little faster. It's also just plain fun. For the charge blade, it has a quick alternate way to charge up all your files and activate sword boost mode. Using the Counter Peak Performance Silkbind attack, default set to pressing ZL plus A, will put you into a counter state which will absorb an oncoming attack if timed correctly. This will charge up all your files, but if you already have your shield in its red charge state, absorbing an attack during Counter Peak Performance followed by an input of X will then also activate your sword's boost mode. This buff adds file damage to your standard sword attacks. Another shortcut for the charge blade is quickly getting to an elemental discharge attack or an elemental round slash. Using the Morphine Advanced Silkbind attack default set to pressing ZL plus X will launch you forward while switching to Axe mode. If you follow this up with an input of X plus A, it will get you right to that hard hitting elemental discharge. If your shield isn't charged yet, you can do a Morphine Advance into elemental discharge but instead hit ZR during that attack. This will funnel your charged file straight into your shield to get that very useful red shield buff, which synergizes with everything else I just explained. For the bow, there's a pretty easy and fast synergy for topping off your health and stamina. The healing arc shot done by pressing ZR plus A fires a health regenerative AoE in front of you, and if you mash backwards on the analog stick to turn your character immediately around as this animation ends, followed by the default set to R plus X arc shot silkbind ability, you will quickly backflip right into that healing area. If you remain stationary for a moment after doing that arc shot, this will rapidly regenerate your stamina as well. Once your stamina is back at max, you can leave the healing area while still getting its regenerative effects. For the longsword, there are two really useful attacks out of the default set to ZL plus X Soaring Kick Silkman ability. The default action if you press nothing after this will send you plummeting the sword downward, which activates the same spirit gauge buff as the X attack out of a special sheath, giving you a regenerative gauge. The other attack you can do out of this is the Helm Breaker, done by pressing ZR in the air after the Soaring Kick Silkman ability connects. This will expend one charge of your spirit gauge, but it's a devastatingly strong attack that is best used when you're at a maxed out spirit gauge. For the lance, it has a situationally stronger alternate way to attack out of the Twin Vine Silkbind ability. The default set to ZL plus X, Twin Vine attack lodges an anchor point into the monster, which allows you to fly through the air to it by pressing ZL plus B. The standard thrust attack out of this done by pressing X is decent, but if you instead press ZR in the air, you'll land into a guard dash. To make this a more useful attack, as soon as you land into that guard dash, instantly press backwards in X to do a 180 spin around attack. This should set you up right in front of the monster, and can hit stronger than the standard aerial thrust because sometimes it can even multi-hit. For the switch axe, there's a buff you obtain while in axe mode that you'll want to constantly keep active. In Axe mode, after two presses of A during the Wild Swing attack, you can follow that up with an X attack to perform a heavy slam. This attack gives you a gauge buff that allows for your sword mode to build up to its amp state somewhat faster. Also, there are a few follow-ups after the heavy slam, but one you might miss is the back plus A attack. This sends you attacking backwards, which also sets you up perfect for the Invincible Gambit Silkbind attack. For the heavy bowgun, there are a few ways to reload and change ammo types more efficiently. During battle, if you're really trying to make the most out of a damage opportunity, you might want to simply swap over to a different ammo type and fire those off instead of taking the time to fire reload, fire reload. If you choose to play this way, you're going to have a ton of empty or partially depleted magazines. If you hold down the X button, you'll begin reloading all of your ammo types in sequence, perfect for those brief downtime moments during a fight. Also, if you have a preferred ammo type that you use often and then jump over to fire off any other one ammo type, you can do this reload mechanic to quickly get right back to your previously used ammo no matter where it appears on your list, as long as you left it with a non-full magazine. For the Great Sword, I really like its plummeting attack, and there are two great ways to get even more out of it. First, performing a horizontal wire dash by pressing ZL plus ZR or ZL plus A, followed by ZR, will allow you to do a super quick plummeting attack close to the ground. You can also extend the range of this by pressing B during that wire dash. There is also a charged form of the plummeting attack, which you can do after your hunting edge silkbind attack connects. 
Although this can be less consistent than the X aerial attack which can be charged, the plummeting attack can out damage it the more parts of a monster it can connect through. For the light bow gun, the fanning vault silkbind ability default set to pressing R plus A almost entirely changes how the light bow gun plays. One of the things you can do now while airborne is to press A directly over a monster to lodge your wyvern blast charges right into them. Another use of the fanning vault is to shoot normally while airborne, and certain ammo types that are usually really slow to fire and tricky to land, like the cluster ammo, can be used quickly and with deadly precision if done during the fanning vault. The broad use of the single silkbind skill makes it one of the most weapon changing single abilities in the entire game, so make use of those wirebug charges when you have them. For the sword and shield, taking a look at its parry and counter mechanic. By pressing ZR plus A, you'll perform a guard slash, which can be done while blocking or during most any point of a combo. If timed correctly, the guard slash can absorb an oncoming attack, which will be indicated by thrusting the shield forward, and if you press X after that, you can launch straight into a perfect rush combo. If you press X right after each time your character flashes during the perfect rush, you can boost the damage of each hit, and the last strike will launch you into the air if it connects. You might not always want to go for that aerial launcher at the end of the perfect rush, and you can press A at the end of that combo to quick spin slash out instead. If you enjoyed this video, I would love to hear it, and there's more stuff like this to come, so consider sticking around at Boomstick Gaming. As always, this has been Alex, and thanks for watching this all the way up to the very end.